In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Flutter speech to text package to transcribe words in real time within your Flutter application on iOS and Android. So with that said, let's get into the video. Before we begin, I'd like to show you a quick demo of how our application is going to work. The user will be presented with somewhat of a UI similar to this. And when they click on the speak button, whatever the user is going to say to the device, the device will transcribe that in real time and display it on screen. Once the actual part of recognizing the speech is done and transcribing it, the phone will also give us a confidence rating on how confident it thinks it is on the actual text that it has produced from the speech we have given. So with that said, let's get going. So to get started, just initialize an empty Flutter project, and then you and I are going to be at the same starting position. The first thing that I'll do is that I'll remove the my homepage class and the corresponding state class from the main dot dart. Why? Because we're not going to be using it. Then I'm going to create a new folder under my lib called pages. And then from here, I'm going to create a new file, which I'm going to call home underscore page dot dart. Then within this file, I'm going to create a stateful widget. And this widget is going to be called home page to command save. And then for the build function, I'll return a scaffold. With this done, I'll do command save. I'll come back to my main dot dart file. And then for the home property, now we will initialize our home page and do command say. With this, what I'll do is that I'll actually add the dependency for speech to text to our actual project. So to do that, just go to pub.dev, link to all of the resources as well as the source code for this is going to be in the description below, as well as the top first pinned comment so you can get the source code from there. So you're just going to be coming to the dependency section and pasting in the dependency. Then you're going to be running Flutter pub get if it doesn't automatically run for you. And then you should have this dependency within your application. So once the dependency is installed, the next thing that we need to do is basically set up the actual plugin to work with both iOS and Android. So let's do the iOS side of things first. So for iOS, it's going to be very simple. The only thing that we need to do is that we need to go to the iOS folder runner info.plist and then we need to basically add some information here for the permissions that a user is to give for this app to function properly. So I'm just going to be adding the two permissions which are actually mentioned here which are NS speech recognition users description and NS microphone users description. So just add a key and then the corresponding string for it, which is the actual reason as to why we need this permission that's displayed to the user to command save. And then that's pretty much it. You're done with the iOS side of things. Next, we're going to be doing the Android side of things. So go to Android app source main and then the Android manifest.xml file and then paste all of these use permission clauses within it before the actual application tag, like so to command save. And then the final thing for Android that you need to do is that you need to actually go to the apps build.gradle file and then change the minimum SDK version to 21. With this done, the show is about to hit the road. So I am going to start debugging the application and we can actually go to our pages homepage class and we can start coding here. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to initialize our speech to text class so that we can actually interact with the device's native APIs for transcribing text. So to do that, I am going to create a final variable called speech to text on my class. And I'm going to say this is going to be underscore speech to text. And I'll set that equal to a new instance of speech to text. With this done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I am going to be creating an init state function or overriding the init state function for the class. And then I will create a function called init speech. And this is going to be a asynchronous function. And this function is basically going to call await underscore speech to text dot initialize like so. And then this function is going to return a Boolean to us once it is done. So what I'm going to do is that within my class, I'm going to create a variable called bool and I'm going to say speech enabled is the going to be the name for this. And I'm going to set this equal to false at the start. And then here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set that equal to be whatever is the return value from this function. Like so after this, I'll call set state. So the UI gets re-rendered and that's pretty much it. Then within our init state function, I'll call init speech like so to command save, rerun our application. And as you can see, now we get a prompt asking us to give it the required permission. So I'm going to say yes while using the app and allow. And now we can actually get going with the next step. So now that our plugin is actually initialized, we can actually create a function that will allow us to start listening to the user. So for that, I'll create another function called start listening. This is going to be an asynchronous function as well. 
um, and this function is basically going to call um, await um, speech to text speech to text and then dot on result speech to text dot listen actually and the listen function is going to expect us to pass it a callback function for on result which it is going to be a function which will basically handle what happens when we get a result from the speech to text plugin so once on result is called what i'm going to be doing is that i'll create a new function which i'm going to be calling on speech result like so and this function will basically get a result passed to it and then it'll do something and it'll basically handle the output that the listen functions on result property is going to give us and then what we're going to be doing within on speech result is basically handling updating the ui with the words that were transcribed and now are given to us to display on the ui so for that i'll call set state and then what i'll do is that i'll go to the top and i'm going to be creating a, another string here which i'm going to be calling underscore words spoken and this string is going to be responsible for actually storing the words that were transcribed i'll take this come back and then i'm going to say within the set state that word spoken is going to be equal to a string and then within this i'm going to interpolate result dot and then i'm going to say from here that we're going to have recognized words like so and then do command save with this done the next thing that i'm going to be doing is that i'm going to be also determining the confidence level of the speech result so for that what i'll do is that i am going to also create another variable called a double and underscore confidence uh, level like so and set this equal to zero at the start and then within here what we're going to be doing is on our speeches result we'll do confidence level equals to result dot and then from here i'm going to say the confidence value like so and do command save once this is done we can actually call the start listening function and start listening so for that what i'll do is that firstly i'll go to my scaffold i'm going to create an app bar and what i'll do is that i'll set that to be a app bar widget so just let me add the code for that um, and then do command save with this we are going to be now displaying an app bar hopefully if i reload our application and once this is done the next thing that i'm going to do is that i am actually going to be adding a body property to my scaffold so i'll do body and then the body is going to be center and then we are going to have a child which is going to be a column and then i'll do command save so now that we have the app bar displaying and we have defined the body to be a center widget with a column as its child the next thing that i'm going to be doing is that i'm going to be finding the children's property for my column and the children is going to basically just be a container which is going to store the status of whether we're listening or not listening or are ready to listen or thing like that so i'll have a container this container is going to be basically having a child so what is this child going to be well it's going to be a text and what is the text within this child going to be well what i'll do is that i'll add some conditional statements here so i'll say that if our speech to text is listening then what i'm going to do is that i'm going to say that this text is going to be saying that we are listening right now like so and if for some reason it isn't that then what i'm going to do is that i'm going to check if our speech is unable if the speech is unable then what i'm going to do is that i will basically print a, another string which is going to be to actually prompt the user to tap the microphone button so for that just let me paste like so and if this isn't the case then what we're going to be doing is that we'll say that the speech is not available and we need to maybe actually make it available by accepting permissions or something like that so as you can see now it says that tap the microphone to get started then what i'll do is just to improve the styling of this text i am just going to basically add a style property to this to increase the size of it and then i'm also going to be adding a padding to the container so that the actual text has some padding from the top so now with this done, before we actually show the result, I'd like to actually basically implement the button which can allow us to speak with the phone or not. So to do that, what I'll do is that I'm going to basically to our scaffold at a property which is going to be the floating action button property. So let me just quickly do that floating action button. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be of type floating action button. And here we're going to have an on pressed callback so what is on pressed going to do well what is going to do is that if the speech is speech to text is listening 
well if it's listening then what i want to do is that i want to disable it from listening so we'll just call that function and i will say that it's going to be stop listening so I'll just add that function call here, but for now that function isn't defined. And if that's not the case, then we want to start listening. So start listening is always there, but the stop listening isn't. So let me just quickly go ahead and define the stop listening function. So just like we've done before, I'm gonna come to the top, and then what I'll do is that after the start listening function, I'll do void underscore stop listening. And then I'm going to say this is going to be asynchronous like so. And within this function, I'm going to do await. Await speech to text dot stop like so. And that's pretty much it. And then after this, I'll call set state like so as well. Within my start listening function, I'll also do set state so that the actual UI gets re-rendered when we start listening. So for that, what I'll do is that I'll call set state. And then within set state, I'll also set the confidence level to be zero like so. Then I will come down to where it says what's the on pressed function giving us an error for. It's saying that I don't need to add these um, actual parentheses to the end of the function and now we can actually see the floating action button but it's a different color so let me just change the properties of this so that it's easier to see so firstly what i'll do is that after the on pressed property i'll set the tool prep property to be listening and then after this i will define the actual icon for this which is going to be child icon and then if the speech to text is not listening then icons.mic off if it is then icons.mic like so so now the mic is displaying and then the final thing that i'm going to do is that i'll copy and paste the background color in so it's easier for us to see so it's now red so now if i actually click on this the speech to text is going to be enabled. We're going to see a green at the top and we are going to be speaking something and the phone will be transcribing it. However, it's not being displayed on screen. So let's quickly fix that. So to fix this, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be going back to our column and then within our column, what I'm going to be doing is that after our container, I'm going to be adding an if clause. I'm going to say that if our underscore speech to text dot is not listening, and our underscore confidence level is greater than zero, then we can actually display the confidence. And to do that, what I'll do is that I'll just copy this text widget in because it's very simple, like so. Um, and I'm gonna say that our underscore confidence level will be multiplied with 100 and then it'll be dot two string as fixed. So we'll just fix the decimal points that there can be and do command save. And that's pretty much it. So if our speech to text is not listening and the confidence level is greater than zero, then add this text widget to our children's list for our column. So now the confidence is being displayed. So the last thing that we need to do is basically display the words that are spoken. So to do that, what I'll do is that I am basically going to be adding an expanded widget Within this expanded widget, I'm going to set a container. And what I'm going to do is that this container is going to basically store the actual text. And this container is going to have a child. The child is going to be a text widget. And this text widget is going to say words spoken like so. Do command save. And let's see if the words spoken are shown. Yes, they are. So now the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be basically adding some padding to the container. So let me just quickly do that. And then after this, I'm also going to be updating the styling for this. So for the text property of word spoken, I'll set the styling to be phone size 25 and font weight W300. And then after this, what I'll do is that I am also going to be going back to my text here. And I'm going to do command shift R to refactor it. I'm going to wrap it with some padding. I'm going to say that the padding only is going to be from the bottom. And then I'm going to say that the bottom from where there, I'm going to do 100 like so. So the confidence is moved up with this done we are actually ready to give our app a spin and actually see if the text gets transcribed correctly or not so if i reload our application you're going to see that we're going to be presented with this ui and then the last thing for android that you need to do is that you need to click on these three dot buttons then this options menu is going to appear you're going to click on microphone and enable the virtual headset plug inserted as well as virtual microphone uses host audio input options and after this the Simulator is going to be linked to the microphone that you're using on your computer. And once you click on the speech button, you're going to be able to transcribe whatever you're saying. 
So testing one, two, three, testing, testing. And once you stop speaking, it'll automatically shut off and actually stop the speech recognition. Or you can click on the button and it'll do the same thing. The app is going to transcribe in real time our speech and give it to us as well as give us a confidence level for how confident it thinks it is in terms of transcribing the speech. So with that said, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.